take the situation, and I know, of course, it's, it's terrible. It's not ideal. It's affecting all of our livelihoods. But how can this time, this moment in our lives right now, be a defining moment? Yeah, as author Ryan Holiday says in his, in his book titled The Obstacle is the Way, you want to look at any obstacle as a chance to become better than you already are. The obstacle is the way, suggesting that, that it, is, it is the obstacle that helps shape us and develop our own character and resilience. So with that in mind, it, it really does come down to a choice, right? Uh, I really wish that there was some sort of magic wand that I could wave over somebody and it would just make them feel better. But if you are to feel better, it's a conscious choice and a habit. Right. So that means you have to do something every day. And if you want to have an experience such as being brave or courageous in the face of uh, a threat or a pandemic that we find ourselves in, you have to train yourself to do so. It's a skill that can be learned. Okay, right? like a muscle memory. Absolutely. The, the brain is without a doubt a muscle. And so all this information that we're sharing here today is free, right? And if you don't use it, it's going to do you just as much good, right? It's going to do you zero good if you just sit here and, and listen to it and don't apply or explore deeper into what it is that we're talking about. So if you want to experience something you never experienced before, you have to change something that you do every day. I see. Got you. I mean, it's tough. And I think a lot of people, they need help now and they need guidance because it's hard to weather the storm and kind of adapt and adjust to best come out of this situation better than they were before. One of my biggest fears is that I'm just going to, you know, binge watch Netflix, eat a lot, sit on my couch. After a couple months, this goes away, this is going to pass and I'm going to be maybe a little bit heavier, unmotivated and lazy. So <laughs> this could be a period of growth and development by setting small little goals each day that will compound over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's been said that we're disturbed not by events or things, but by the perspective that we take of these things. Gotcha. And, and that's where talking back to your, the thoughts that you're having and, and utilizing stoicism, you know, reading Marcus Aurelius, reading Zeno, reading uh, Cato the Younger, right? Going to the original text can be useful, as well as finding a, uh, a cognitive therapist that you can work with who's qualified to help you walk through this. For people that I work with, I have my own take on rational emotive and cognitive behavioral therapy, a sort of model or language to help them understand how to begin to analyze what it is that they're thinking to make those adjustments so that they don't end up finding themselves in that feared place that, that you're talking about. And I refer to it as a CPR model. And the reason why I titled it that is because uh, I want people to understand that they need to do something for themselves if they want to feel better and get better. Right. And, and so the C is going to stand for current events. So if you go back to high school days when we wrote current events articles, we're talking about who, what, where, when, why, and how. Right. You want to analyze your situation and really have a depth of insight into what it is that is related but not causal to your emotional or behavioral disturbance right yeah. next we have a perspective that's what the p is for and in order to discover what your perspective is what you need to do is record your thoughts and take a look at them see what the theme is of your thoughts because more likely than not if you're having an emotional behavioral disturbance your theme is going to fall into one or, or multiple of these four categories that were first discovered uh, by Albert Ellis or really categorized and conceptualized by him based on Stoic philosophy. And I've kind of recapitulated that into my own language to help people understand it a bit faster. So the first one is that if you have a rigid theme, that's going to be one of the most common afflictions that people will find in, in when they start looking at their thoughts. Right. So, so if you want to be able to tell if you have a rigid theme, it's a matter of knowing, am I telling myself something that's inconsistent with my reality? Like, oh no, I must not get the coronavirus, for example, right? I very much hope that I don't get the coronavirus, but there's really no reason why I must not get it, right? 
And what I mean by that is thinking that I shouldn't get the coronavirus does not change the probability of me getting it. Mm-hmm. However, if I am able to remember, I, I, you know, I really hope that I don't get it. But if I did, it wouldn't be the end of the world. I'm strong enough to handle this challenge. I'm going to be in a much calmer and grounded place to make sure that I'm taking the proper precautions and not totally letting go of myself during this time. Mm-hmm. As a quick example. So that's going to be the, the most predominant one. Briefly, the other three are going to be, you could have a bad theme, meaning that you're really focusing, as we were talking about earlier, how this is a catastrophe. We don't know what's going to happen. It's this big thing. Don't do that to yourself. It's not going to be productive. We want to focus on what is going on in your present moment. Are you safe? Do you have the necessities that you need? Food, water, shelter? Is, is your family okay? Past that, everything else is going to be bonus. Uh-huh. Right? The next one is going to be a weak theme. And people might notice that that manifests for them in thinking that they're incapable of tolerating the discomfort, essentially telling themselves something that is not true and making them feel weaker than they actually are. You'd be amazed how many times I have this conversation with people where they feel like, you know, whatever they're suffering from is just totally unbearable. And yet they have withstood it. And sometimes even with a, with, uh, a good candor and, and sense of dignity for one, two, three, four, five years. Right? right? So we are much stronger than we realize. And we wouldn't want to tell ourselves a message that makes us feel weaker than we are. And then lastly, we could overgeneralize and think that ourselves uh, or somebody else are worthless for some menial behavior that we did. Like, I made a mistake, therefore I'm worthless. Or that person's not social distancing properly, therefore they're worthless. So we want to be careful with how we're talking. If we're overgeneralizing, we want to be more specific. You know, I may not like that that person isn't protecting themselves and, and our community properly. But that doesn't mean that they're worthless as a person. They're still a person right? But they are making mistakes right now, mm-hmm. right? And we can still accept when we make mistakes. That's kind of like, you know, uh, <laughs> as, uh, as, as one, of, um, one of my coaches in, in RACBT told me, it's, this, is, this is like RACBT on speed. You know, it's really fast and, and in a nutshell what, what this is about. I see. So as you can see, Joseph can go on and on about this <laughs> all day long. And I just want to conclude now. The main point of this is not to kind of be like the news and just come up with another thing to scare you or anything. But what we really want to do is inspire you right now and tell you that you're not alone. You know, we're all going through this together. You're not alone. You're not isolated. There's people out there that can help you. Call your friend. Call your family. Call a loved one. Speak to them. So, Joseph... You put in some links in this video that could be very helpful to the audience. So would you mind kind of describing the links that we're going to put down below? Yeah, absolutely. So I have some videos to help people get a sense of some of the habits that we were talking about, like intermittent fasting, following a low-carb diet, and some of the doctors that are proponents of that, such as Dr. Jason Fung or uh, Thomas DeLauer or... um, Dr. Eric Berg, he's another good resource to use. And you'll see these people in the descriptions below. Aside from that, I also have, I've suggested some books to read, such as You Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, 12 Rules for Life by Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, The Obesity Code by Dr. Jason Funk. Right. And all of these can be very useful in a number of ways. If it's the stoicism and, and uh, that you're interested in getting more familiar with, you can refer to the Daily Stoic or The Obstacle is the Way, both by Ryan Holiday. And if it's RECBT that you're interested in becoming more familiar with, there's a number of books written by uh, Dr. Albert Ellis that can really be helpful in, in getting the wheels started and in this process for yourself. And lastly, we've included some information on breathing techniques, which I feel are very instrumental in terms of a coping mechanism and just basic everyday self-care and upkeep. Two that the two that I find most helpful are something called box breathing, and we've linked the TED talks below, so you can see some of the research behind why that works. And most interestingly is this Wim Hof method of breathing. There's two different styles. One can be used in a in a pinch, uh, and another one's a bit more longer of a format. And this gentleman Wim Hof actually discovered that you can 
moderate your immune system response through utilizing your breath. And the video below, it connects it to the research that, that was done to confirm that breaking news information in the science community with regard to Wim Hof. I see. So all this value we're offering. So how can our audience contact you, Joseph, if they want to work with you or, or talk to you during this time period? So uh, due to social distancing, I'm currently only offering online therapy, therapy through a video like we're doing right now. And if you or a loved one is uh, in need of some therapy, you can reach out to me at 631-517-3525. Or you can email me at revivify365 at gmail.com. That's R-E-V-I-V-I-F-Y 365 at gmail.com. And I'd love to set up a, a session with you. Real quick, we're not trying to really sell you anything, but the point is it's, it's helpful to find someone that can hold you accountable and keep you on track, especially during periods of uncertainty. Joseph and myself have actually been on weekly accountability calls so every sunday at 9 30 a.m for the past three months we've been having a 30 minute to one hour call where we each go over our weekly plans and what we've done what we've accomplished and we've been holding each other accountable and it's been very useful to my own development especially like i just got back from china i didn't know what i was doing so finding a mentor finding someone that you can talk to anytime is very valuable yeah, our, our talks have been instrumental in, uh, in my own life uh, to make sure that I'm staying on task and moving forward. I thank you for your time as well. Yeah, so and thank you, Joseph, for jumping on this call with me. Do you have any other final remarks for the viewers? Stay safe. Make sure that you uh, prioritize what's important. Breathe. Make sure you're taking care of your nutrition, shelter, right, the essentials your loved ones, and, and don't stress things too far into the future. Talk back to your thoughts. Don't just accept them uncritically. And if you need help, ask, you know, reach, reach out. To make that a little bit easier for people, I'm going to be offering video sessions at 50% off my usual rate. So, again, you know, feel free to call or text or email anytime. Yeah, reach out. We're all here for you. We're going to do this together. We're going to get through this together. Anyway. I'm Michael Nicastro. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment below. If you liked hearing Joey talk, we should, maybe we should get him on a couple more videos. I think so. But um, we're in this together, like Joey said. Go out, have a good day. Stay safe. Thanks. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much for listening to part two of my talk with Joseph Giovanni. If you haven't already, you can tune into part one. Don't worry. It's not in any chronological order. You can still follow along. I'll provide the link to the last video somewhere up above. Also, just a friendly reminder, we're going to put tons of useful links in the description below, as well as Joseph's contact information. And lastly, if you could do me a favor and give me a like on this video and also subscribe to my YouTube channel, it would mean a lot to me. My focus on this channel is hospitality, customer service, and how to work in a restaurant. But right now, my focus is on you. So I want to make sure that we're going to come out of this stronger than ever. So I'm here for you. If you want to talk to me about anything, my line is open. Feel free to comment on YouTube or DM me on Instagram. Let's get in touch. Let's work together as well. All right. I'm Michael Castro. Take care.